Um, I wanted to just provide you a little bit of update. I know everybody's been following this story very intently. Um, we did the, early this morning recover the body of uh, one Mitchell Clock. And that's M-I-T-C-H-E-L, one L, and his last name Clock, K-L-O-C-K. -K. He's 23 years old from Riverview. He is uh, was married earlier this year, and uh, he basically uh, has his own welding service, M Clock Welding Service, that he started just a couple years ago. Good, hardworking person who was uh, doing a dangerous job, and we definitely our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. His family's asked for some privacy, so we would ask that you give them some time to digest everything that they've been through these last couple days, especially with it being the holiday season and all. Um, and they, um, you know, he's a hardworking guy just trying to care for his family, and uh, this is going to obviously strain them emotionally and maybe even financially. So please, uh, we'd ask everybody just be respectful and, and keep the, the family in their thoughts and prayers. Um, our primary role as a police department up to this date was to provide scene security to make sure that we preserved any evidence that needed to be recovered uh, and support the, the needed uh, equipment that needed to get in here to help the fire department's operation as they conducted the, the, um, the recovery operation. Um, the, um, the detectives have already done a few interviews, but we have a lot more work to do. This case will be very intent on kind of looking at uh, the documentation that's available, what kind of information was learned about this structure up to the, the point of the, uh, the, the, the tragedy, and then going from there to kind of uh, evaluate, uh, you know, how the whole thing was processed. So, you know, we've heard a lot of questions like, you know, how is this going to change what you do at the city of Clearwater? Or we're going we're gonna to holistically look at everything, but we are certainly in the early stages of gathering a lot of that data to be able to um, really do a, a good evaluation. Uh, certainly our detectives who are skilled at doing death investigations and doing uh, you know criminal matters uh, are involved in this particular uh, incident as part of our obligation to, to investigate all death investigations. Uh, we are not at the point where we say this is a criminal investigation. I want to make sure that was very clear. Uh, we are at a point now where we are collecting information related to the death of Mitchell and trying to make sure that there, if there is any culpability and that evidence is presented to us uh, during our investigation that we will then of course handle it appropriately and uh, follow through with any type of system of accountability that needs to occur. Uh, but we are far away from being able to do that. We are um, working with a, uh, a, a vendor, a contractor, uh, Thornton uh, Tomasetti, who has actually already assisted in the, the search and rescue aspect or the search aspect of this particular case and looking for them to continue on with us to provide our detectives some impartial uh, information with regard to you know structural engineering, construction, uh, repair processes, and, and kind of really get a good a solid foundation on what that uh, what that is. Um, Rob Shaw is going to give you a document as we uh, once we complete this, which is kind of an overview of what our uh, City of Clearwater uh, in planning and, and development department has already done with regard or what they had done kind of up to this date. It's a very rough little timeline. Uh, it's we're releasing it. It, it actually, uh, I believe some people may have already got it. So in the interest of transparency, we want to make sure that you all have it. It really just kind of chronologically shows what has happened up to this particular point. Um, we first received a complaint in September, or I'm sorry, July 1st. Um, the initial inspection on the 15th of July revealed that there was some information there was a concern. We prepared it an unsafe structure report that was uh, shared with the, the property uh, management on the 19th of July. And we have followed up on uh, August 30th, October, I'm sorry, August 30th, October 12th, and November 24th, just to kind of follow through with the stages. Um, as I'm sure everybody could presume, it's not like you show up and say there's an issue or unsafe that uh, all of a sudden engineers and repair people show up. They have to go through processes to find people that are available to work on those things. And so uh, that was what uh, was occurring during the, that time period I just described. Uh, the property manager was communicating with our inspection staff and there was, uh, you know, uh, there, there, was, there was no, you know, attempt at, at that we see at this particular point for them not to try to address the problems. Uh, so we are definitely going to kind of just continue to evaluate that, but at this point it doesn't seem like, you know, they were just ignoring our, our, our conversations. It was moving relatively well. Um, there's very little information I can provide. This is going to be a, a very complicated case that will take a lot of time to, to gather all the documentation. Uh, as I said, we've done a few interviews for. There's certainly other people that may have had knowledge in, of the building. Uh, that uh, and of any other complaints or of any other processes that were being done, uh, whether it's for you know to to you know attain insurance or anything during the, the property ownership, that we would just want to talk to and kind of work through those processes. So that's going to take us some time. 
I don't anticipate there'll be too many more updates after today unless something you know new is revealed through that investigation. Uh, but um, I did want to at least make ourselves available. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, Division Chief Ch Kleinfelter is here as well. He has been kind of the face during this uh, initial stage of the Clear Clearwater operation. Uh, now we're trying to transition to the police department being the primary role as we do our our uh, our, our function of our, our you know investigation. Um, be more than happy to try to answer any questions and. Uh, We'll maybe go left or right. Hey, um, according to the timeline, it, it appears that the work was being performed without a permit being issued. Uh, can you talk about that? And, and was there a requirement uh, for a structural engineer to, to examine the work before it was performed before that permit was issued? Yes, you, you'll see that it, it indicates in the document I'm going to give you that our recommendation or our, uh, the direction was for an engineer to be involved before the work was started. Uh, so that is something that we'll be looking into. I certainly want to make it very clear that I don't think that Mr. Mitchell Clock deserves to be, you know, looked at in a negative light because of that, because we're talking about a hardworking man that's just trying to put food on the table, a true American. And so I really would like to just uh, uh, kind of, I think your point's well taken, but I don't have anything more than what you just said, and we'll be looking at how that happened and what uh, what transpired to get there. Ma'am? Was Mitchell Clock working in the capacity of his own business, and can you repeat the name of that business, and also what about complaints that were put in on this structure in with regard to the first one, the name of the business is A, I'm sorry, M, his initial, Clock, K L O C K, Welding Services, an LLC that was opened in 2019. I don't know with what capacity you see who contracted for his services at this particular time. That is definitely one of the things that we are going to look into do. I don't have all of the documents. I referenced the one I have and that we're going to share with you today. Certainly, we are going to be collecting a total historical overview of this property and all of the information that we have available. And uh, we will certainly look into that. Chief, I'm going to try to go left. The lighting law been unsuccessful. Do you know why this building was looked at in July? Were they getting complaints then? Do you know why? It's all preliminary. I really can't say with with a hundred percent degree of certainty, but I do believe the property may have changed hands at some point through a purchase, and then some of these issues may have come up during the uh, transition of some insurance. But we're still looking into that. Chief, when your investigators and inspectors, building inspectors Yeah, certainly the city of Clearwater inspectors, they made an unsafe report, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to shut down the entire structure. And so that's some of the things we need to get into the weeds and determine what level of, uh, of, of, of uh, safety was kind of implied by the report. So obviously this isn't an, a building that's occupied with people all the day and the people that we're dealing with that were, were actually workers trying to do repairs. So we're, we're certainly um, we're going to evaluate exactly that. We're, we are going to lean on some uh, some you know expertise from some some private services that'll be kind of independent in the process, and um, certainly the detectives will be more uh, more versed in this uh, by the end of next year than they are today, no doubt. So. Is there any evidence at this time that any crime was committed here when it comes to this death? At this time, I don't think I can comfortably say there's a crime being committed. I think at at, at this point. Um, when a death is, death is involved, you go through this systematic process of the investigation in case it gets to that. So as we start to review the documents, if there is information that's, you know, that that's reveals that there is a potential charge, like say a culpable negligence or a manslaughter charge, we want to basically lay the foundation to make sure we collect that stuff in the proper way. So that's what we're doing now. We are not nearly to the point of having evidence where I would say I have any uh, corpus delecti of a crime at this point. We, we have had some communication with the property manager, and I think there's been some with the property owner, but not, not they, they're not being uncooperative. We just haven't gotten to the point where we've sat down and done any of those kind of conversations yet. Chief Kleinfelder, can you talk about your operations overnight? Oh, wait, wait, before you go oh, I'm sorry. Chief, um, what, what about the status of the building now? Um, is, it, is it going to have to be demolished because of the safety concerns? Uh, will it be occupied again? And, and what happens about the surrounding building? Sure. Where well, certainly uh, they'll have to make other arrangements for parking. The building at this point has been deemed uninhabitable, so we will not let people back in the building. We are working with the property manager now. They are supposed to, they're making arrangements to have a security fence, and they have made arrangements for staff to make sure that nobody you know gets into the building. 
Uh, so at this point, the building is not going to be occupied moving forward. Whether it gets demolished is really not an answer I have for you today. Whether it could be repaired or not be repaired, I really don't know. Um, what was the second part of your question? And, and, and have all the cars been removed? Yeah, there's no cars in there now. The only thing that we are dealing with is we have uh, the, the fire department, you know, during their process, we've cut the power to the parking garage, and so we are working to restore power to a, a, a building that's, you know, affected by that. Um, but I'm sorry? You, you, you answered all of my questions. Great, thank you. Was there any else to write? Good. All right. Um, Chief Mike Felder, can you talk about your operations overnight? And yeah, uh, like I gave you the update yesterday uh, afternoon, yesterday evening, uh, once the equipment was in place and once the equipment started, it wasn't going to stop. So we used the excavator uh, up to the point where we got really close to the victim. At that point, we pulled all the equipment back and then it became a uh, the tech rescue operation. We had the, the Pinellas County Technical Rescue Team was here. We um, went in and started hand removing uh, some of the equipment. Uh, a little after five o'clock this morning, they were ready to remove uh, the section of stairwell uh, that was on top of Mitchell. And uh, the, the uh, technical rescue team in conjunction with some of the heavy equipment that was here um, secured that, that last piece of concrete that had to be moved. And by about 6.30, uh, right around 6.30 this morning, uh, Mitchell was removed from the, uh, from the structure. We did have uh, experts from the USAR team that are, that are part of the Pinellas County Technical Rescue Team out of St. Petersburg who were down uh, at Surfside. So some of the techniques that were used down there and, and that structure collapse, uh, we, we definitely uh, leaned on their expertise um, throughout this operation. And this, and did the stairwell pancake come right down? Uh, that's what it looks like at this time. Again, it's all still under investigation and that's going to be kind of part of that uh, final report that comes out. The only thing we do know is that he was here doing some sort of stairwell repair, but we're not, I don't have all the details right now on that. For us, from the fire department standpoint, we were strictly focused on, uh, you know, early on rescue and then when it became a recovery mission to make sure that, that we uh, fulfilled that mission as, as safely as possible. Anything else? Right. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Robbie Neal. Go get you that piece of paper. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief.